celebrate the presence of the Lord in our midst. Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say, I am what the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. And I can do what the Bible says I can do. It doesn't matter what is around me. The Lord rules with his word. And therefore I shall conquer in all areas of life. Say yes! Anabakasiakataraba. Wow, 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 God, we may be seated just for a while, please. What a service. What a presence. What an atmosphere. I want to give you a word that you will take it. It's going to be a powerful word for you. When the Lord reveals it in your own spare time. I have got literally a few minutes. So I give it to you. The power of what proceeds from your mouth. Your mouth carries power that you did not know you have. So... I give an illustration of Abraham from the book of Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to verse 21. Romans chapter 4. Tell your neighbor and say it is in Romans. Chapter 4, verse 19 to 21. Now Romans is in the New Testament. It says, as we all stand to read it. Oh, oh. It doesn't give in to, oh yes. The word of the Lord says, and being not weak in faith. When God made a promise to Abraham and he says, Abraham, I will bless you. You will have children and the children will not be able to be counted. When you look up in the sky, you see the stars. This is how massive the congregation of your children will be. Or if you go to the seashore and you look at the sand in the seashore, the sand represents the faces of your children. This is how much there will be that you wouldn't be able to count them. Am I talking to someone? Have you ever tried to go to the seashore and you started to count the sand, particle by particle? Whether are you going to arrive at the final totality? It was what God was saying to Abraham. And Abraham began to believe God on that word when God says, As you see the sand, as you see the stars, so shall it be with you. And the Bible says now in verse 19, and being not weak in faith, that means Abraham not being weak in faith. Somebody say, and not being weak. Not being weak. Say it again, and not being weak. Not being weak. The Bible says he considered not his own body, now dead. In other words, he did not consider, he disregarded his body. 
even when his body was now dead, I mean at the age of 100, and then you look at your wife, Sarah, at the age of 90, and Sarah for that matter, we know that through history, the doctors could confirm that she was barren. In other words, she had no power to give children. It was not only that, her issue was exacerbated that she was now old. And, and, and the Bible says, Abraham did not consider his body, nor yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Let's move to the next verse, please. He was not weak. The Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He did not waver at the promise of God. There are promises that are there in the scriptures. God has made enormous promises. He said he shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says he shall be with you. Those are promises that God has made. Am I talking to someone here? Bring it to the screen. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. In other words, he did not entertain unbelief in his system, but was strong in faith. Somebody say strong in faith. So he was not weak in faith, but the Bible therefore tells us that when he was not weak, he did not become neutral, but he became strong in faith. Somebody say strong. strong. Say it again, strong. And the Bible says, giving glory to God. Giving what? Giving glory to God. So, what is it that propelled so much faith in Abraham? Is that Abraham did not go and murmur. Abraham did not go and complain. Abraham did not, but Abraham decided to give glory to God. In other words, I could see him standing up in the morning and uh, looking at the seashore and saying, Lord God Almighty, I honor you. Nothing is impossible with you. He was giving glory to God. That tells us that we need to substitute sometimes our complaints our neighbors know about our issues. They know about our struggles. But we need to interchange that by glory to God. Give glory unto the Lord. It doesn't matter whether your furniture, the furniture of your home, it is scattered. It doesn't matter whether you don't have the next meal for the next day. You need to come and give glory unto God. Let me finish that. Let's go to the last one. But being persuaded, fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. What God had promised, his, he was persuaded. He was pushed. He was motivated. I wonder whether you also are so degraded. You are disillusioned. But as for Abraham, the Bible says he was fully persuaded. I wonder whether you can wake up in the morning and say, I don't care whether there is clouds in the sky. All that I know and I know is that God will perform whatever that he has promised. He believed in the ability of God. You may be seated, please. So brothers and sisters, I share the word with you that Abraham was not weak in faith. And therefore let, it, let us imitate good people like Abraham. He believed in God. God is not in the yesterday. God is not in the tomorrow. God is in the now. 
That's why the word of the Lord says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now faith is. Now faith is. God is interested in people who believe right now, now, that he can supply their needs now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, now. I know what the word of the Lord says, that Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. But yesterday is gone. Yesterday will not return. It is gone. Am I talking to someone? So you have to believe that God is in the now. He is relevant now. God is relevant now. He can do it for you now. In this dispensation, he can do it now. Somebody arise on your feet and say, my God can do it now. My God can do it now. Or say it right now with confidence that my God can do it now. My God can do it now. Yes, I believe that he can do it now. Be seated. So, the Bible says he was not weak in faith. What did it mean that he was not weak in faith? Because he considered not. You know, many people when they reach areas where they are challenged in life, when they look on the left, they look on the right, they see only challenges. Abraham did not consider the challenges. I'm talking alone here. I mean, he was 100 years. He did not consider his age. Many people, when they reach the age of 75, they give up in life. All that they will trust is when they go every, every month to go and collect. They trust more on what they get from government than believing that God Almighty can do wonders at the age of your 75. I'm talking alone here. So he considered not. He did not consider that his body is now dead. But trusted in the Lord. So in other words, his focus was in the right place. He considered not. So that means he did not focus on the negativity that surrounded him. God knows that your furniture is tattered. God knows that you don't know where your next petrol is going to come from. And God is saying, don't consider that. Consider the strength of the Lord, the might of the Lord, the hand of the Lord. The word of the Lord says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded, motivated that what God had promised is also able to perform. God is able. Children of God, God is able. He is able to take you to university. He is able to take you to college. Don't ever entertain whatever the devil is saying in your ears. God is able. The children of Israel, three of them, stood when they looked at the fiery furnace and the stalking of the fiery furnace became more. They could feel the heat coming to them. But instead of believing in the power of the fire, they believed in the ability of God. They said, our God is able. Honey, in the midst right now, of all the issues that we are going through. God is looking for someone that can arise like yourself and say, my God is able. My God is able. My God is able. I, 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 I say my God is able. Arise tomorrow morning. Just before you take your breakfast. It doesn't matter what kind of shambles of breakfast it is. Arise and speak right now into your circumstance and say, my God is able.
Say it again. My God is able. The word of the Lord says you shall have whatever you say. I have come today to reignite your faith. That believe that God is able. Can I say it in Zulu? Unkulunkulu agabalashi abantubaki. Let me help my international guests who are connected to this service. God will not abandon his children. Why should you be the first one to be abandoned? Never. God knows your address. He knows the number of your hair. God is interested in you. It may delay, but it is soon coming to your life. Have I prophesied that to you? Let me say it again. It may delay your breakthrough, might delay, but the Lord Jehovah knows your address. The promoters of Jesus Christ went to the wrong address. They went to the wrong person. And they met him and they said, who, where is he who is born? Went to the wrong address. So we are now saying, may the Lord redirect your promoters to the right address. Because the promoters were carrying gold. They were carrying frankincense and they were carrying men. They were carrying precious things. No wonder that Jesus Christ had his own house. I don't have a moment to go there to talk. He went to his, when the other disciples of John the Baptist asked him and said, where do you abode? That means where have you taken comfort in your life? Jesus Christ says, come and see. And the Bible says they went into a mansion. So that money of the mansion came from that gold, came from that frankincense, came from that man. I am here to make an announcement that God has now redirected your promoters. They are seeking where you are to come and present. I leave it there. I am saying to you, God is repositioning you. Something good is about to happen in your life. You are about to astound even your neighbors who were always, when they were looking at your house, were saying, Ah Hashem. They are about to change their language. They are about to change their story. They are about to say, Ooh, what is it? They are about to say, Ha! Ah, Yo, oh, you are changing the vocabulary of your neighbors. I want you to now make a covenant with God and say, Lord, I am going to be fully persuaded that what you have promised, you are also able to perform. I want to invite you to the table of the Lord. Let the table of the Lord be organized and settle for us, please. May the deacons come and help me to serve the table of the Lord. I want you to take these elements, take the bread and take also the cup and form a covenant with God. That God, you said you are not going to leave me. You are not going to desert me. I come before you to form a covenant that you are God who said in his hand you will supply all my need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God can send somebody from Japan who would look for you being given the address by the power of the Holy Spirit and they can locate you. 
that shows how strong God is. Let me have a song. Jehovah amongst you in your sickness may this bread that is not like ordinary bread of Albany of many other bakeries but this contains the life of God as I break this bread I make it in remembrance of the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Let it release health in your life. Healing in your life. Where the doctor said we can go this far. May this bread bring miracle of healing. Every issue Every tissue that is affected in your life that has gone through this ease. May the health of God come. Not only health, may the strength of God come into your family, into your life, into your situation. The strength of God upon you. May the life of God in Zoe it says the life of God that's the translation of Zoe may it come upon you whatever has threatened you to short circuit your life it may be sickness whatever they've said about your body may the Lord right now take over and bring his life into your system. I give you this bread this morning. As it touches your tongue, let healing come. Let strength come. Let life come. I give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Jehovah,
garment in the authority of the blood of Jesus. Whatever threats have come into your life, you might have been threatened by witchcraft. They might have threatened you by wizardry. They might have threatened your life with repossession. Whatever threat that you are faced with, I ask right now that the voice that is contained in the blood of Jesus arise and rebuke every threat on your behalf. Let there be a miracle of rebuke. May the Lord Jehovah right now bring great things upon your life. The word of the Lord says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. This blood contains power. It was the same power that liberated the children of Israel from Egypt. Over three million of them came out because of the power of the blood that was smeared on their doorpost. May this blood do that job once again. Set you free right now from any threat. Set you free from negative condi conditions. Receive right now the authority of your freedom, the blood of Jesus, I give unto you. I say, take and drink. For it's a pillow, Jehovah, it's a over your battles. And even today, your battles have been taken over. We celebrate today this great day where the Lord is going to do wonders and miracles. There are signs and wonders and miracles that we have seen in this church that people, some of them, they came on wheelchairs. But God Almighty set them free from wheelchairs. They pushed their own wheelchairs out of the church. God has done wonders, miracles. And I believe God for a miracle. That today as you have partake, I say you partook, In the Holy Communion. May the miracle contained in the Holy Communion. Come and meet you. At the point of your need. I, 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 I was sure you were going to clap your hands. I take this opportunity once again. To appreciate you. You may be seated for a while. I have finished. This today was not a day of preaching. 
It was not a day of uh, expositions. We know, you know we can teach in this church. But today was for us to assemble together and for God to be able to do wonders for us. Yesterday at Pastor Dudu Rangaka's home, there are people who came to stand with the family, but eventually they received the Lord Jesus Christ. May I see by shower of hand those people who received the Lord Jesus Christ at Dudu Rangaka's family. Are they here? I learned that there were people that came to receive the Lord Jesus. So I wanted to welcome them into the church. God bless you for... I also am very grateful that I am going to have tea together with those who had visited us before, who have come to share their lives with us before, but others who ended up taking this church as their spiritual home. I want to share tea with them after this service. There are just few things that I need to share with them. And uh, I am invited to be uh, in Soweto uh, after this service. Uh, the Zoe Bible Church uh, of uh, Archbishop Botswana has invited me and Mama Faith. So I will share tea with you and have some words with you. And then thereafter, I will leave uh, for Soweto. Is that okay with you? Amen. Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. I was so, so, so taken, so taken. to be seated next to you. I know I am seated next to greatness. And as the Lord promote you, please remember me that I was seated next to you. Papa Rambau, it's, it's so amazing. I tell them these things and some of them they don't. You know that this church has produced the group CEO of Telcom. This, this church, we have got lecturers and professors, even from Eunice. Senior lecturer. Professor. This church, we have the, the group chief executive of Sisu and Saluba and Associate. And, and, and now they are called Grand Thanto, Thornton. He's in this church. For that matter, he's now a pastor in this church. Now, when I tell people and say, greet the person next to you, you don't know whether this person next to you is going to be uh, the employer of your children tomorrow. So greet the person that's next to you. So... I will come back to take benediction together with you. God bless you.